This is our mini lesson on scale. It's not the type of scale that you stand on to weigh yourself. It's not this type of scale where we're balancing justice or, I don't know, dollars and dimes. This is a type of scale that we use when we're looking at the world, for example. We know clearly that the world is not this big. The world is much larger, but we scale things down. We use this a lot on maps and, um, and clearly when we're looking at the world. So what we're going to do is look at shapes that are similar, like this shape and this shape, and they are scale measures of each other. Okay? So this is a larger rectangle, and I said the lengths were 2 and 4. And then this would be a smaller rectangle where the lengths are 1 and 2. Clearly this is not to scale, but that's not the point. The point is that these are called similar shapes, and they're similar when the corresponding sides are proportional, okay? So 1 to 2 is equal to 2 to 4, all right? Just like in this here example. So they are similar shapes when the sides are proportional to each other, all right? And they have to be the corresponding sides, like this side to this side is equal to this side to this side. All right, let's look at some examples to try and help understand this a little bit better. We've got a triangle here. This length is 1. This length is 2. All right, so this is, this is wrong. There we go. That's better. OK, the lengths 1 to 3 we have here. 1 to 3 is the same proportion, right? It's proportional to 2.5 to 7.5 or 3 to 9. In other words, these are all equivalent fractions or proportional to each other. So these lines then are proportional lengths and these two triangles are similar triangles to each other. All right? Let's go and go ahead and use proportions to find the missing lengths of these ones. And I think by finding our own missing lengths, it will help us to understand exactly what I mean. First off, we want to look at what we have. We have this length here is 1.2. Well, first off, we're told that these shapes are similar. So we know that the lengths of each side are proportional to each other. So the length here of 1.2 and 2.4, we could write that as a fraction. 1.2 over 2.4. And we know that that fraction is going to be proportional to any other corresponding line. So we have this one, 1.5 to whatever that length is. All right, now we're going to try and be consistent here with everything that we do. I'm going to suggest, um, well, first I'll write out this equation. So it's 1.5 to whatever that length is. I'm going to call it between h and i. I guess I'll call it x. <laughs> doesn't really make any sense, but that's all right. So we know that these two fractions are equivalent fractions because we put the length of the smaller shape on the top, the length of the larger shape, the length of the smaller shape here on the top, and then the missing length there. Because they're proportional to each other, we can write them like this and then use cross multiplication to actually solve, or, and, and we'll get the right answer, but when we have the unknown value on the bottom, it makes it more difficult to solve. So what I'm going to do, because we can do it this way if we want, we can just put the larger number on the top for each of them. All right? And this is perfectly fine to do that. It's saying this one over this one is equal to the unknown over 1.5. And that's fine to do. And what that means is that now we can solve using cross multiplication and we can just leave that unknown on the top. So it's just saving a step here. So now instead of having to solve everything and then dividing, we can now do 2.4 times 1.5 divided by 1.2. 
and all of that is equal to x. When I get a question like this with several um, fractions in it, I usually use a calculator. just because it saves me a little bit of time, but you can also multiply it all out. But it is equal to 3. So this length of this line is equal to 3. All right, now let's go on to another line in here. We've got a. Let's do this one right here. Let's find out what 1 is equal to. So we can use the same proportions. Um, the 2.4 over 1.2, and instead of being this length now is x, x over 1 instead of 1.5. Right, so all I've done is I've just changed it, and when you're solving proportions, you're going to do this a lot. You do the exact same work over and over, so in my case, it's kind of easy. I can just erase what I want there, and one times 2.4 is equal to 2.4 divided by 1.2, and that will give us the result of 2. This tells us something really interesting. Um, it tells us that we have a ratio of 1 to 2. So now, instead of using this 2.4 over 1.2, now I can use the ratio I can save myself a little bit of time here and use a ratio of 2 to 1. In other words, the lengths on this shape are twice as long as the lengths on this shape. And we can test that with our 1.5 and 3 that we discovered earlier. Right? 1.2 times 2 is 2.4. 1 1.5 times 2 is 3. And 1 times 2 is 2. So we know now that it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So this will make life a little bit easier for us. Um, let's discover this unknown length from here to here. We have our 2 to 1 ratio. 1.1 is the length of the smaller one. We will set up a proportion just like we did before. It's just going to be a little bit easier to solve our proportion with less decimals in there. All right, so let's go ahead and do our cross multiplying. We see 1.1 times 2 is 2.2. So 2.2 is equal to x. We can fill that in right here on this shape. 2.2. You see how we did that? 2.2 um, divided by 1, anything over 1 is just itself. Right? So basically, we can take what we've seen here, any of these numbers here, and just multiply them times 2 to get this length. So if I want this length from g to l, I will take the length of a f, which is 3, and multiply it times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. See, so each step, you see, I've, I've kind of done it in different ways and just made it a little bit easier. So we found all the missing lengths except this one right here. So that's a missing length on this shape. On this one, it's 2. And we have another length that's 2, so that's actually going to be the same as that one. It'll be a length of 1. All right? So that one I just used looking at it. I have one, a 2 and a 1 here. That's a 2. That one's going to be a 1. So I'm just going to match up. There's a lot of advantages to s similar shapes. The first is that you can solve them using proportions, which is really good. And the next one is that you can also solve them sometimes just using logic. So I hope that this recording has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.